glad to be here. I'm glad to be. It's been a while since I've been up here on a Sunday morning, so it's a, certainly an honor and a pleasure to be up here and, and, and to be here. Um, we've been doing a series on uh, Saturday nights called the U Series, and uh, the point behind it was is in the month of March we took um, ideas from everybody that um, had ideas they wrote on their response cards, any ideas that they would have for messages. Uh, maybe that was uh, something that they were struggling with or something they wanted to know more about or it was a certain passage of scripture or whatever it was, but they wrote those down and each week we went through those and compiled them and we've come up with a, a series of messages that we're going to do and, and this one is uh, supporting one another. Uh, more specifically, supporting one another in everything that we do. And um, as I thought about that, and, um, and I thought about this weekend preaching on Saturday and Sunday, um, I'm doing something I've never done before in my almost nine years of ministry, and that's uh, a two-part series in two days. And uh, what that means is, is last night I did uh, part one and uh, of supporting one another, and then today we're going to do part two. doesn't mean if you weren't here last night that you're just left behind or anything. We're going to do a, a small recap of last night so you'll be up to speed, and then we'll move on with the message today. So um, hopefully everything goes well and, and we're able to before with that, but maybe something I really like, maybe something I never do again, so I don't know, we'll see how it goes after today. But supporting one another, the passage we're going to be using is Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 11, and it's, um, it's in your, uh, it'll be up on the screen, you can turn in your Bible, it's also, if you have your outline, if you flip your outline over, the scripture's on the back of the outline as well. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21, we'll be reading that just a little bit. But supporting one another. You know, as I thought about this message, and I thought about us as Americans in general, we're selfish people. It's me, myself, and I. That's kind of a slogan in America. It's about what we want, what we want to do. It's about how um, it benefits us in most situations. Just in general, we're selfish. Um, in driving, for example, when I'm out driving, it's about getting where I got to go, how I got to get there, and you're pretty much in my way. So, you know, it's about me. It's about where I got to go. And our relationships and our friendships and so forth, it's, um, and our marriages even, in general, it's about what I can get out of the relationship. It's about how it benefits me. Does this person make me happy? Does this friendship benefit me in some way? Otherwise, we don't tend to get in those relationships. Um, it's about us, it's about what we want. Same with our job or school or any other situation. Most of the time where the focus is, in our, is on ourselves. But it's important to support one another. It's important to do this. It's something that we all need, whether we realize it or not. If you think about children, children need support in everything they do. If our children uh, bring something to us um, with their artistry, no matter how good or, or great it is, it's always going to be the best thing. We have to support them in what they do, and they're going to get a place on a refrigerator with a magnet. Um, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, my stepson, Dapper, he's four years old, and he can go up to the door and uh, where the frost or whatever is on the door, and he can write his name backwards at four years old. That's pretty awesome. You know, and so we tell him, that's awesome. I can't believe that you can do that. Wow, Dabber, you know, he needs that kind of support. And kids need that. Children need that. Teens need support. Teens need support when they're out in this world. They're facing the struggles of this life, trying to find their identity, trying to see where they fit in, facing all the peer pressures of this world. They need to feel supported by their family, by their friends, and most of all, by the church. Um, adults, we need it as well in our relationships, in our friendships. We need to know that people care about us and support us in what we do. We also need to support one another in what we do, no matter how unimportant it may seem to us. Support is needed in all areas of life. Would you pray with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just continue to lift you up this morning. You're so worthy to be praised. And ultimately, we get the support that we need from you. Um, you support us in so many ways, and, and we fail to realize that so many times when we're seeking it in so many different places. Help us this morning just to be able to focus on you, focus on your word, what it says to us, what it means to us, how it relates to our lives, how it translates, and um, how we can apply it directly and leave here a little bit different than what we came. We thank you, Lord, and praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. As I mentioned to you, it's in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. 
Um, so let's go ahead and read that passage. As, I, as we came up with this, uh, Mark Rose and I actually sat down and we were talking about this message and he, uh, when we came through some verses and this verse was one that really just stuck out to me. There's so much meat in this verse. There's so much to, to as, a, as a person to be looking at and think, man, I need to live this way. So if you would read that with me, starting in verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And kind of the focus verse, and, and, and out of all these verses, I think that really sticks out for this message is verse 16. If that's one that you want to highlight or circle or underline in your Bible or on your outline, it's this one. It's live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. To support one another in everything, we have to be willing to put others before ourselves. To support one another in everything, we have to be willing to put others before ourselves. We have to put others first. So what I want to do is kind of a short recap of, of last night, and that's the first five that's on your outline there, and then the last four will be for this morning. So, number one, to do this, to put others first, we have to have sincere love. We have to have sincere love. That's found in verse 9. You know, I think a lot in this world, we, we find ways to um, be pretty fake, to be honest with you. We act like we care. We place on the fake smile, and we act like everything's okay, and we really do care. And then we walk out and never think another thought about another person's life. People are looking for sincerity, looking for authenticity, looking for someone to really care about them, to take time out of their busy schedule, whatever that may be, to say, I care enough about you to listen and to follow up with you maybe and give you a call next week and say, hey, how are you? How are things going since I talked to you last? Sincere love for one another. Number two, be devoted to one another. Be devoted to one another. And it's found in verse 10, first part of verse 10. You know, people are devoted to a lot of things. People are devoted to... Um, their health, people are devoted to their families, which are good things. People are also devoted to a lot of other things that swallow up their time, video games, sports, things like that. But scripture says to be devoted to one another and brotherly love. Be devoted. How do we do that? How do we look at our, our brother and say, everything else is, is not important in my life right now. You're the number one thing. I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to check up with you. I'm going to hold you accountable in your life. If, if something is not lining up that you need to be held accountable for, be devoted to one another. People are looking for that in order uh, to be supported. Number three, honor one another. Honor one another. And that's the last part of verse 10. It actually says, honor one another above yourselves. This is also known as being humble. Putting others above yourself. Taking a lower position to honor someone. To say you are important no matter what you do, no matter what it is. Um, in, in this life, that, you know, one person may be the CEO of a company. This person may be the lowest person in the company. They are just as important in that company to honor them. We need to honor one another as Christians. Lift each other up. Number four, share with each other. Share with each other. It's found in verse 13. And specifically sharing with each other 
um, that are in need, God's people that are in need, it says in the scripture. Um, and as I think about that, and as I think about um, how do we do that, how do we share with one another, is it physical needs, is it material needs, how do we do that? A lot of times it's about getting out of your comfort zone. I uh, think about some friends of mine that are, are missionaries um, that are over in Japan. They've been in Japan now for eight years. And um, it was not comfortable for them to go there. They had a two-year-old um, when they decided to go on the mission field full-time. And um, I have to think, it was not easy to uproot everything they had here in America, all the, the blessings that we have here, raising a two-year-old, all your family, and to uproot yourself and move to a country where you know no one and become missionaries there um, and try to teach them about Christ. And um, it's been a successful ministry, and I know they're glad they went. They've, they've adopted two Japanese children since they've been there. Uh, praise the Lord. But, but it's not a comfortable thing. And I think sometimes God is calling us to get out of our comfort zone, to share with each other, to do um, what is needed in each other's lives. Uh, many of you know we serve a food pantry here, the local food pantry, the uh, Richmond Community Food Pantry. One of those ways is through giving food. And we, uh, the fourth weekends of the month, which would be this weekend, we have people bring in food and we take that food to the pantry. But another way is to go and serve those people. And uh, that's not always comfortable to serve people that are literally starving um, in our community. But God's called us to be the hands and feet of this community. Number five, be hospitable. Be hospitable. That's in verse 13. <laughs> We ask, well, actually it says practice hospitality. Now this is one that I struggle with the most. And you can ask my wife, and she's told me this before. I'm a person that likes to come home, kick off my shoes, put on my night clothes, shut my door, and you know, I'm home. Don't bother me, I'm relaxing, I'm doing my thing, and I don't want to be bothered. It's not easy for me to just invite people in my home all the time. But the, but the scripture says to practice hospitality. To practice it. In other words, invest in people's lives. Bring them into your lives. When you bring someone into your home, you're inviting them into your life. You know, feed them a meal. Let them know that you care about them. Practice hospitality. We have to put others first. Sincere love. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another. Share with each other. Be hospitable. Number six. To put others first, we have to live in harmony with each other. Live in harmony with each other. That's found in verse 16. Be on the same page. To be one accord. The King James actually says to have one mind with each other. Uh, I love that version of it. It says that you know, as a body of Christ, you know, a lot of times we are worried so much about so many little things that tend to divide us or to cause dissension. We have to do what it takes to be one body that serves one Lord going in one direction, one mission. To teach, baptize, and disciple our community to know, love, and serve God on one team in harmony with each other. Put others above ourselves. <coughs> Humbleness. <coughs> so missionaries in the Philippines set up a croquet game in the front yard. Several of their native neighbors became interested in this game and wanted to know more about it and was interested. So the missionaries explained the game to them. And started them out each with the mountain ball. As the game progressed, the opportunity came um, for one of the players to take advantage of another by knocking that person's ball out of the court. So a missionary explained the procedure, but his advice was only only thing it did was puzzle his um, Filipino friend. Why would I want to knock the ball out of the court? He asked. So you'll be the one to win. The short stature man shook his head in bewilderment. The game continued, but no one followed the missionary's advice. My mic just went, but when a player successfully got through all the wickets, the game was not over for him. He went back and gave aid and advice to his fellows, and as the final player moved toward the last wicket, the affair was still very much a team effort. And finally, when the last wicket was played, the team shouted happily, we won, we won, and this is how it should be in the church, the body of Christ. We're a team. We all went together. We all move forward together. We all serve together. We all move in one mission together. We're a team. We put others first. Number seven, do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Do what is right in the eyes of everybody. That's found in verse 17. Now, this isn't my worldly standards. The world will tell us 
that do what feels good to you now and what makes you happy now. In other words, if you want to get drunk all day and it makes you happy, hey, do it. Or if you want to kill yourself today, hey, go ahead. If that's what makes you happy, that's what the world will tell us. But that's not what this is talking about when it says do right in the eyes of everybody. We rightly strive to do what's right in the eyes of God. And we rightfully strive to do what is right in the eyes of other Christians. After all, we don't want to appear unspiritual, but sometimes we do not concern ourselves enough with doing what is right in the eyes of everybody. You know, everybody would include our co-workers. Everybody would include our families, our neighbors, our friends. <coughs> it would, would be uh, our daily contacts who we have personal business, such as people we meet while we're shopping, paying bills, driving. Sometimes we seem to forget that the world is watching us, and therefore... Our lives are either going to bring honor or dishonor to Jesus and the gospel. People are watching our choices and behavior will reflect either positively or negatively for our Christianity. Do we watch what we do in our business field? If we're business owners, is everything that we do ethical and moral, whether it benefits us or not? And our driving habits, I'm speaking to myself here, is it lawful or unlawful? And handling disputes or agreements, do we do it in a way that honors other people, that considers their feelings? These are just a few, but we have to make sure that we do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Put others first. Number eight, live at peace with everyone. This is in verse 18. And actually, if you notice in the scripture, it says, if it is possible, live at peace with everyone, recognizing that in some situations it may not be possible. In some situations it may not be something that you can control. Um, you cannot control the actions of other people. So you cannot always make peace in every situation if, if another person chooses to not be peaceful in that situation. But as far as it depends on you, the scripture says, live at peace with everyone. Now, last week on Saturday I preached on loving the unlovable. And this was one of the parts of that. Living in peace with them, choosing as much as it depends on you, no matter how unlovable the person is, to still be at peace with them. You know, I like to think about this uh, when I'm playing golf. Does anybody here like to play golf? A few people like to play golf. I'm sure you're all much better than me. Um, but when I'm on the golf course and I get out there, lo and behold, I'm probably on the second or third hole, and I'm on my 12th or 13th hit. I know I should just stop at 10 and move to the next hole, but I don't because I'm hard-headed and I've got to get it. You know, I've got to do what I've got to do while I'm out there. So I'm out there, and lo and behold, I, I hear a couple balls hit about 20 or 30 feet away from me on the ground. And I look back, and there's four or five guys just standing at the tee looking at me. And I think, man, you know, what could I do in this situation? I could do what I do when I'm driving and someone tailgates me. That's just move slower. Or... I could do as much, you know, as much as it depends on me, have peace in the situation and do the right thing. Let them pass through, right? Move to the side, tell them to go ahead and move on, because that's the honorable thing to do. That's honoring another person, because they are much better golfers than me. And honestly, if they're behind me, they're going to have a long day. So, um, so, you know, when I think about that, as much as it depends on me, uh, living in peace with everyone, um, I'll let them go. So when we support others, we put them first, and that means as much as it depends on us, we live at peace with them. Number nine, the last one on here. Overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Find this in verse 21. We're not to do bad things to others when they do bad things to us. We're not to say, oh, well, you did it, so I can do it now. I'm going to return the favor to you. We become just like them. We've allowed them to control us and control what we do. We've allowed their bad behavior to conquer us, and we've been overcome by evil in those situations where we allow that to happen. We're to overcome evil with good. I don't know if any of you in here are Star Wars fans, but in the movie Star Wars, the Emperor and Darth Vader are evil. They're on the dark side, if you will, and they, they do bad things. And Luke Skywalker is a good person. He would represent the light. And the Emperor and Darth Vader start doing bad things to Luke, and they try to entice him and bring him in, and they're hateful and angry to him. They want him to be like them, um, which would be evil. They want Luke to join the dark side. Luke lets the Emperor and Darth Vader 
um, make him return evil for evil. They have beaten Luke. Luke has been overcome by evil at that point if he's to fall to them. But Paul says instead of becoming overcome by evil, we should overcome evil with good. That means we don't allow bad things that people do to us make us so bad that we fight against it with evil. We fight against it by doing good. Again, if you remember from Star Wars, Luke Skywalker told the Emperor and Darth Vader that he would not fight them. And when the Emperor told Luke to kill his father, Darth Vader, he refused. Luke's determination not to not behave badly, to not return evil for evil, um, was had a deep impact on Darth Vader, and it caused Darth Vader to change and decide to be good. Luke overcame evil with good. A Christian is to be a Luke Skywalker. We are to overcome evil by refusing to let the bad action of others make us turn bad or behave badly. We're to overcome the evil of others by acting better than they act. Paul said this in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 15. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all men. Let me read that verse again. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 <coughs> See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all men. In order to support one another in everything, we have to put others before ourselves. And as I was thinking about this uh, passage in this sermon and was writing this, um, I had gotten on Facebook and a, a young lady by the name of Val Martin um, had posted something. Val Martin, uh, she was a senior in high school the first year that I worked at Mahoney Valley Christian Service Camp as a counselor during the high school week. And she was in my family group, actually, that year. And uh, she's now graduating from Indiana University uh, with her bachelor's and going on to the master's program next year. She had, this is what was her post, a simple post, but this is what it said. Romans 12, 9 through 21, equals life goal. I thought, wow, that's pretty awesome. So I, I put a comment on there and I said, wow, that's pretty cool. I said, that's exactly what I'm preaching on this weekend. I said, it must be a God thing. And she responded back. She'd like to hear the messages and so forth. But you know, the more I got to thinking about that, shouldn't that inspire all of us? Shouldn't these verses, shouldn't we all aspire to live this way? I mean, if we're going to truly live as Christ would want us to live, humble ourselves, put others first, we, we need to have sincere love. Be devoted to one another. We need to honor one another in our lives. Share with each other, those in need, specifically God's people. Practice hospitality. Live in harmony with one another. Do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Be at peace with everyone. And most of all, overcome evil with good. We should all want to live lives like that. Our life goal. What I want to do for a second is just take a minute and you go ahead and start looking over your list. If you look at those nine, maybe there's one of those that stick out to you. And just say, man, I don't do a good job with that. For me, like I told you, it's practicing hospitality. It's practicing hospitality. It's something I just have to work on. It's something that, um, that I need to work on in order to put others first in my life. Um, but for you, maybe it's something else. Look through that list. And maybe put a star by one or two of those that stick out to you and you say, I really need to work on those. I really need to work on those so I can work, be better at putting others first in my life. Take a second to do that.
Give us this humility which realizes its ignorance, admits its mistakes, recognizes its need, welcomes its vice, accepts its rebuke. Help us always to praise rather than to criticize, to sympathize rather than to discourage, to build rather than to destroy, and to think of people at their best rather than at their worst. This we ask for thy name's sake. Amen. You can take that prayer, put it somewhere, maybe in the mornings where you where you get ready or in your car or on your desk at work or wherever, but somewhere that will remind you to put others first in your life always. Okay, one more thing I want to do. At the bottom of your outline, you see three things. Serving, learning, and honoring. There's a recipe for being humble. And that is serving, learning, and honoring. So one of the three things I'd like to challenge you to do as we leave here is to find someone that you can serve this week. Whoever it is, I don't know who it could be. It could be someone in your family. It could be a friend. It could be a neighbor. Um, whoever it is, find someone you can serve. It could be taking out their trash. It could be doing something really nice for them, um, helping someone with their groceries, whatever it is. But find a way to serve someone this week. Be intentional about it. The second one is learning. We should all be learners in our life. We should be constantly learning from someone. <coughs> if you have a mentor in your life, then I, I challenge you in the next few weeks, maybe set an appointment with that person and just sit down and talk with them and learn from them this week. Find, find ways to learn from them. If you don't have a mentor, then maybe seek out that person who could be someone that you can learn from in your life. The third one is honor someone. Find someone to honor. If it's just as simple as writing a note and saying, I want you to know I appreciate all that you do. You are so valuable to me in what you do in my life. Thank you. Find someone to honor. To support one another in everything, we have to be willing to put others before ourselves. In closing, I'd like to read a scripture to you out of Philippians chapter 2, um, verses 5 through 11. It's one of my favorite passages of scripture um, that speaks um, to who Jesus is and what he came for and what he did and what we all will do at the end. Um, so I'd like to share that with you. Starting in verse 5, it says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have you confessed that this morning? Is Jesus your Lord? Have you told someone that Jesus is your Lord? This morning we offer what we call an invitation. We ask you to, to make a decision. Whether it's a first time decision to say, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. Not just say it, but make him Lord of my life. Let him have control of everything. Give it all to him. I want to lay it at the cross and give it to him. You certainly can do that this morning. Maybe it's coming forward and saying, I need help. I need support from my Christian brothers and sisters in this room. Help me through this daily walk. Help me to live like I should live. Hold me accountable. Maybe it's just prayer for something else in your life. Whatever it is, we invite you to come forward. Let's stand and see. Oh